Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're going to be diving into the world of anime based games on the Nintendo Switch and here we'll be looking at 30 games that could expand your library, covering a wide range of genres so hopefully there is going to be something for everyone. Now if you do enjoy the video consider subscribing, it was a monumental task to put this one together and it helps out the channel a huge amount. Also if you could like the video that definitely helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now before we do begin then, let me share a bit about my relationship with anime and to be honest Honest, it is just minimal. I've watched the classics, I think Akira, Ghost in the Shell, A Perfect Blue, as well as all of the Studio Ghibli films, and then recently I've also dived into Demon Slayer and Attack on Titan. However, I'm here to learn from you, the anime fans, so please share your recommendations in the comments below. Currently, to give you an idea, I have Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen on my list. I'm even considering tackling the monumental journey of One Piece, although it's 1000 plus episodes definitely intimidates me a bit. Now then, let's quickly talk about how these games made it onto our list. To be included, each game had to be based on an anime series, with a few exceptions that I will mention and explain along the way. So don't expect here titles like Persona 5, Tales of Vesperia, or Nia, which had received anime adaptions after the game released. The list then is also in no particular order, but I will highlight my favourites as we do get to them. My Hero 1's Justice 2 is a personal favourite of mine, it's an arena brawler with incredibly flashy combat and you'll find arcade action here without overly complex control schemes. The game offers a solid story mode that allows you to play as both heroes and villains and then it covers arcs from season 4. It serves as a direct continuation of the first game which is also available on the Switch and definitely worth your time, however this follow up is even stronger because they have fine tuned the controls and then they expanded the roster from 23 to 45 fighters. I will link my reviews for both games in the pinned comments. Fairy Tale is a turn-based RPG that had promising ideas but fell short in execution. It picks up the story from episode 123 of the anime, so newcomers, you may need to do some online research to catch up as I did since I was completely lost. Now the plot revolves around a battle that traps you and your party in a magical force field propelling the world around you forward by seven years. Upon returning to the world, your once renowned magical guild is forgotten and you must fight to regain your status. While the combat, likeable characters and stunning cutscenes they do shine throughout, the repetitive gameplay loop of accepting missions and defeating enemies simply lacks variety. I would primarily recommend this game to fans of the franchise. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle R is a great option for fight fans who seek more complexity than the typical arena brawlers so often attached to anime games. Now, it initially appears to be a traditional side on perspective, but here you can sidestep and maneuver, so think like games such as Virtua Fighter and Soul Calibur. It adds a strategic element. Now, the game can be as complex or beginner friendly as you want it to be thanks to a variety of settings, and one of the game's highlights is its extensive roster of 51 fighters allowing you to choose from a wide range of characters. Additionally, the game recreates 104 iconic fights from each era of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in its contained story modes. However, it is important to note here that this is a remaster and the original game's story mode has been removed. Now, although I haven't played it personally, I understand that the original story mode it was well loved by fans. One Piece Pirate Warriors 3 Deluxe Edition served as my first real introduction to the world of One Piece, sparking my interest now in the anime. Unfortunately, it covers many of the key arcs from that anime, making it newcomer friendly if you don't mind those spoilers. However, I still found myself occasionally lost admittedly, but it is impressive to see how much content they managed to compress into this game. Now, In terms of that gameplay, if you're familiar with warrior style games, you'll know what to expect here, a relatively repetitive gameplay loop of mowing down hordes of dumb enemies. However, the likeable cast of over 40 playable characters definitely adds some much needed variety thanks to their unique abilities. This deluxe edition then includes all previously released DLC and it provides a stronger entry than its fourth game counterpart which is also available on the Switch, still worth checking out but I do think they really kind of nailed the formula here. Overlord Escape from Nazarick received a unique response when I covered it on the channel. The feedback I received indicated that while people love Overlord, the choice of Clementine as the protagonist was considered a mistake that was near constant complaints. In this game though, our mission really revolves around finding our missing memories and escaping. However, I will admit here, I know nothing about Overlord, but this really adds nothing to the story. There's no real contributions to the 
I guess the overall of world. The gameplay though, it features action platforming elements alongside then light metroidvania aspects as well. So expect here branching pathways, weapons, powers, even a grapple hook like mechanic that will require some practice, but it can be mastered relatively quickly. Surprisingly as well, the game was relatively short, lasting right around six hours, which was definitely unexpected. Dragon Ball C Kakarot is an action RPG that appeals to both new and existing fans of the Dragon Ball series as it covers a wide range of offense, making it pretty inclusive for any player regardless of their, you know, familiarity with the franchise. Now while the game provides what I'd call minimal takes on key offense, it's still nice to see them. And then for, you know, long term fans, it also introduces a few new ideas along the way. Now in terms of gameplay, Dragon Ball C Kakarot focuses on action, complemented then by light RPG elements. This combination prevents the combat from becoming overly, you know, repetitive. And then from an RPG perspective, the game includes collectibles that serve as currency, unlockable moves thanks to a skill tree, smaller sandbox like locations to explore, and character leveling. It's a decent formula that holds potential for expansion in future iterations. Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission is a unique tactical card game that began in arcades before moving to home console. Now it is set in Hero Town, an alternate reality where the Dragon Ball Hero cards game is immensely popular. Our mission is to become the world champion, but trouble arises when virtual game antagonists invade the real world. We must save our home by teaming up with fan favorite characters. Definitely appreciate the out of the ordinary storyline here. And then the game features over 1,000 cards, missions, online and local play, some exploration, and over 350 characters. I haven't sunk a huge amount of time into this one. Honestly, it's a little simplistic on a combat front, but another option worth considering is Yu Gi Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. I've not played it myself, but I hear very good things about it. Shin Chan and the rest of the title is a mouthful, but I really enjoyed this one as you can find in my review in the pinned comment. It's a relaxed adventure game that has you heading out with your family to visit old friends because your father has a business trip. Now when you arrive, however, all initially seems pretty normal. We explore the small world, we have a camera, we meet the locals, we get up to some, you know, minor mischief. But things quickly evolve and now we see dinosaurs and just all sorts running around the town. It's really just kind of the beginning of the weirdness and we must get to the bottom of what is happening. Not a difficult game in any way, but I really enjoyed my time with it. It's just one of those great chill out experiences. Also, if you know nothing about Shin Chan, do not worry. It's absolutely not required. Record of Lados War Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth is a Metroidvania based on an anime from the 90s. It's a simple enough idea, you awake in a mysterious place and you must get to the bottom of where you are, it's kind of that old classic. I actually think though this was smart as it's built around a series that's really not as fresh in people's minds. The gameplay here however is just fantastic, it's a short burst game I'd say around maybe 8 hours and you'll employ a variety of sword and bow attacks with swappable equipment and spirits that add buffers. It was created then under the supervision of the original creator which is always a positive if you are a fan out there and personally it immediately sold me with its old school style which gave me stronger symphony of the night vibes. Fitness Boxing Fist of the North Star is perhaps the weirdest entry on today's list but I think it's a great idea, fitness with a fan favourite series. There's not much in the way of story here and it's essentially short burst exercise you know, circuits but it builds it out with battles and even boss encounters offering a variety of difficulty options. You won't learn anything new about these characters here but I still enjoyed it, I did a short review which I will link below. And I'm all for these fitness gaming crossovers and anything that can really persuade you to spend, you know, 10 to 15 minutes a day on your health, that's never gonna be a bad thing. It also then packs unlockable costumes, music from the series, and also some new compositions. Dragon Ball Aseno First 2 is a little overlooked in my opinion. I only played it a couple of years back myself. I'd describe it as part arena brawler, part almost RPG, but basically pick up quests and explore this hub location. Now the story revolves around the traveling through time, fixing stories that a scientist has changed, then protecting, I guess, historical offense. It's a good excuse to relive what I presume are classic battles from the anime, but do know again my knowledge is limited, so do correct me in the comments if I am wrong about that. Really need to watch Dragon Ball at some point, but it's definitely another intimidating one. I think what puts people off though is that it is quite complex and initially 
a little overwhelming with a ton going on, there's also some shortcomings in its tutorials and just overall design. However though, once you get into it and you start sipping all over the place and jumping into battle, this game is a blast. It also looks great on the system and it features local two player support as well as online. Captain Tsubasa Rise of the New Champions was a game that I honestly was skeptical about, not because of the source material but rather because of the narrative of driven football and it did impress me. First up it has two story modes, the first will introduce you to the characters and the world through a series of flashbacks, the second then has you creating a character aiming to win a league and eventually earn a place on the national squads. The football gameplay here is unique and I strongly urge you to watch a full review first, you know this isn't your next FIFA game. It's a game of countering, using button presses to dodge, and then shooting really becomes more of a battle between your stamina meters, you know, yours and the keepers, than actually, you know, relying on actual skill. Did I have fun though? Absolutely. I really like the characters, the visuals and animations are crisp, and yet yeah, the whole narrative and selecting dialogue ended up really working for me. I'm actually at the point now where I'm really hoping to see a sequel. Doraemon Story of Seasons and its sequel, Friends of the Great Kingdom, I'm bundling together here because they didn't make huge strides with the sequel, but rather it was more some nice to have additions. That said though, if you enjoy a farm sim game and want an anime spin to it, this could very well be a good option. The mechanics are sound basically, and I found the world a little more interesting than most as it spends a little more time, you know, on its narrative and its cutscenes. Visually then, it's a stunning game with a watercolour-like style, and in the first game we are transported to a mysterious world and must revitalise a farm to live here, and in the second then, it's on another planet, but the idea is the same, we work in trade for what is essentially a tour guide. I don't know much about the characters here, but we play as a young boy alongside Daraman, and yeah, whichever entry you go for, they are about as easy going as they come. One Piece Unlimited World Red was originally released on the Wii U and the 3DS, but it made its way to the Switch, and I think this is a great option for beat em up fans out there. It's almost think like a dialed back Warriors game where it's never quite as non stop, I guess. The enemies are a little more intelligent, and it has a far more interesting combat system. I also like the fact you get to kind of explore this hub location and then jump into the different levels. The story then is simple we spot land on our journey, we investigate, and now we must go ahead and save our crew. Once we get the team back together, we can set up our own parties, and it contains a decent selection of characters. Overall, the story is easy to follow, though there are characters and references designed for the fans out there. They went completely over my head, but still, I managed to keep up, and it also features a fantastic two player local co op. The deluxe in the name then just refers to a few extra quests and costumes. Sword Art Online Hollow Realization Deluxe Edition bundles the base game and the Warriors of the Sky updates, and this is an interesting idea. The concept is that a new MMO launches, we enter, and now a chance encounter with an NPC could be the world's salvation or undoing. Because I have no experience with the series, I found this one really tough to get into. As a warning as well though, on the back of that, it is as much a visual novel as it is an action RPG with them, you know, MMO elements, so just kind of beware of that. I definitely didn't expect it and it kind of took me by surprise, that pacing just felt initially a little bit slow. It is completely single player as well, so that can cause some confusion. If you've played this one, let me know your thoughts in the comments, I do recommend it. You just kind of need to understand what you're getting yourself into as the constant dialogue could no doubt put many off. Digimon gets two games on today's list. It's worth noting that the release order differs between regions. So in Japan, this started as a game and then became an anime, while in the West, it began as an anime and then they later released the game, hence it featured on today's list. If I am incorrect though, do let me know in the comments. This bundle though includes two games, the original and Hacker's Memory. Both of these are turn-based RPGs with over 300 Digimon to collect and Digivolve. The game's style is, in my opinion, really nice and the virtual world it presents is definitely unique. The first game revolves around reclaiming your real body in this digital world, while the other kind of dives into the themes of identity theft. Just expect a whole lot of reading with these, it is non-stop, but I had no difficulties picking up on what was happening, and these games combined will keep you busy, it's going to be an easy 100 hours. 
Digimon Survive then may be a controversial pick as it no question has performance issues on the Nintendo Switch and my understanding is that they have not basically been resolved. However, this game is so unique that it had to get a mention today. It was also a surprise to many that such a heavy focus is on its narrative. You know, if you had to describe it, this is a visual novel with tactical RPG battles. That story though I loved, it's more adult than most as we're transported to a mysterious world filled with danger where we must survive alongside our friends. Along the way though, expect to make decisions that can impact the outcome. And of course, we'll be recruiting a Digimon to join us in this mission. It won't be for everyone, but I was a fan. And the tactical of battles, they may struggle to run at points, but the strategy elements here are sound. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm is always a popular option with anime fans. And while we have all four entries on the system, they all come recommended from me. But the highlight has to be the fourth entry. That's the most recent. I reviewed it here on the channel. So if you want to check that out, find it in the pinned comment below. And I won't go into too much detail as we're jumping, you know, to the fourth game, of course, so for spoilers sake, but it does cross over with the anime and it covers the fourth great ninja war. The series, as well, I will admit, it's done a really good job over the years of being accessible for newbies and longtime fans. Naturally, you should play them all if you want to understand the world. And then gameplay wise, it's an arena brawler with a focus on narrative and also some serious creativity. There's also over 100 fighters here to choose from. Then included with this fourth game though is the expansion that is Road to Baruto, which was based on the movie and has a similar combat idea, but now it's partnered with RPG styled exploration. Sadly though, that mode, it does struggle at points from a frame rate front. Dragon Ball Fighters, and now we're getting into some of my personal favorites with these last five games today. This is one of the best fighters on the system, not just anime, just best fighters in general. It comes from Arc System Works, who are masters of the genre, and the visuals are stunning here. It's only topped, in my opinion, by Guilty Gear Strive, which sadly isn't on the Switch, but very much feels like a continuation of this visual style. There are 24 fighters then, and a few of these are unlocked by our gameplay, but you can expand it to 40 with paid DLC, or the game's ultimate edition. The story then introduces a new character, Android 21, but yeah, this is a brand new story for the game and I had no difficulty following along. The core gameplay then is free versus free tag fights, and this is well worth it if you want a fighter that you could just spend tons of time at mastering each of the game's featured playable characters. It has a massive following for good reason and hopefully one day we will see some sort of follow up. Steins Gate Elite is a masterpiece. This game, for some clarity on why I say that, single-handedly got me into the world of visual novels. Thanks to this, I went on to have experiences such as the incredible AI. Now, I knew nothing about the anime it was based on, but thankfully, it does a great job of giving a newbie everything they need, while, at least to my understanding, actually changing up the story and offence enough that it feels new for long-time fans as well. Expect here a branching storyline, scenes from the anime, including a new animation, a story then set around a team of individuals that find a way to change the past, and then of course, things go wrong, it becomes high stakes because they find themselves wrapped up in a conspiracy. If you like story-driven games, this is a must-buy. And there are a few other Steins games on the system as well that I still need to play myself, but from what I understand, none of them even come close to this one. Pokemon Arceus is like Digimon in that the game came first, but in the UK, the first episode was actually broadcast in March of 1999, and then the game followed. It wasn't released until October of the same year, hence the inclusion today. Now, as a big fan of the original Red and Blue games back in the day, I followed this series for several generations. However, recently, I just got burnt out on the formula and started looking to clones for originality. Then Arceus dropped though, and for me, it's the game many fans have wanted for a long time, and look, sure, it's not perfect, but the 3D world is so nice to see. Open locations, not open world as a warning. A unique story where you set out to uncover all of the Pokemon in this region rather than just heading to the gym's formula that they love to repeat. It also just runs well on the Switch, and yeah, I generally like that art style. The changes, basically, they were exciting for once we're spending more of your time in an open world, having a hub location to kind of get familiar with, and simply new ways to interact with Pokemon as a few of the key examples. Demon Slayer has been a recent favorite of mine. As I mentioned in the opening, I'm a big fan, even if I will say it feels a little lost right now in where they kind of want to take the series. I don't know if anyone else is kind of feeling that, but let me know in the comments. That said though, it has great fight scenes, which has been consistent for Demon Slayer. So turning it into an arena brawler 
was by far the easiest option. You don't really need prior experience with the anime either, but if you want to avoid spoilers, I'd recommend watching the first season and the movie as that's the arc we are covering here. Now much like Naruto and My Hero One's Justice, it's all about over the top fights against fan favourite characters, but I felt they got creative with some of these encounters and many of them feel like true boss fights. Additionally, they have these small linear sections where you can explore the world and honestly, there's really not a lot to them, but as a fan of the show, it's just kind of fun to get to run around. This game looks fantastic on the system as well. And honestly, look, you could argue easily that Naruto is a strong game here. And I want to be transparent about that. I just have a personal investment into this world. And I'm sure you all have your own favorite worlds as well. Attack on Titan 2 Final of Battle is probably my personal favourite anime game on the Switch. I had a blast with this and it is worth knowing then that there are two versions of this game so it gets a little confusing. Basically Final Battle, the one we're talking to today, that includes all a DLC. Now if you own the base game already, you can buy an upgrade pack as well. This expansion here is sizable with new stories from seasons 1 through 3, new playable characters, new equipment and a new mode where you reclaim territory. It's an action game, you are tasked with basically taking down these massive monsters by targeting specific body parts. Once you get your head around the controls though, sipping all over the place, you know, flying through the air, tackling things, it was absolutely fantastic. Alongside you then, you'll have some AI teammates that are surprisingly impactful, and some may not like the fact you create your own character here and accompany the series favourites. It's also, as a warning though, an ambitious game admittedly, and there's nothing wrong with that, but the frame rate does occasionally fluctuate. And that is the video down, let me know what I missed today and maybe what are your favourites on the Switch as well in the comments down below. Also, what animes do you recommend? Let me know that, I'd love to start diving into this more and really getting to know some of these worlds. So with that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news and lists near daily and i'll see you all on the next video thanks everyone